This is a Crossman 22 series CO2 air gun valve. You pretty much have to completely disassemble the gun to get it out. But I've seen a lot of modifications on increasing the performance of the gun by modifying the valve. And I'm going to show you basically what's involved and a very simple modification to uh, achieve a modest increase in performance. Now to get the valve apart you'll need a couple pairs of locking pliers and uh, don't clamp down too tight on it but don't worry too much about marring it because it's not a sealing surface on the outside. So you want to take one of them and clamp it. Look at where the, the screw hole is for securing the valve and 180 degrees from that is the exhaust port so you want to be sure not to clamp directly on those clamp 90 degrees away from those and there's a wall in there so that's a it's mostly solid at that point so that's a good place to clamp it and the other with the other pliers you clamp on the end cap now you see I've removed the seal. You're going to need to remove the seal with a screwdriver or something. Just pop it out before you drill this thing. And uh, also I'm going to replace it with a, a stronger seal because I'm converting this gun to high pressure air with a uh, high pack air tube. So anyway you just unscrew it. It's got an O-ring in there for sealing and you're going to want to remove that too. Now watch as you unscrew it. There are a couple of parts that will come out. There's a spring and there's this piece which is uh, this is where the hammer hits. This is the seal and this is the cartridge puncturing uh, pin. So, what I did when I modified my 2260 was I went ahead and cut that off, the pin. I'm going to leave it on this one, which is for a 2400. And I am modifying it to use the high pack, as I did with the 2260. But I want, on this one, I want to retain the ability to use a CO2 cartridge if I want to. So I'm going to leave that in place. So... I probably don't need to lay that seal down on a, or valve pop it actually is a proper name for it. I probably don't want to lay that down on the that dirty plank. But so one of the one of the the very simple modifications is to go to a lighter spring. And the other thing that uh, you can do to increase performance is to increase the internal volume of the valve. And we're going to cover that. We're going to cover both of those in, in this instructional. If you look in there, there's a lot of meat. The brass comes to about right there where my fingernail is. It's about uh, 0.37 inch deep and if you use a 25 64 drill bit you can actually bore that up to about 0.4 inch or 400 thousandths deeper but I'm going to keep it to about a quarter inch deeper now by boring it a quarter inch deeper I'm going to increase the internal volume, but I will also be moving the the spring seat forward in so doing. And therefore there will be less preload on the spring. In fact, I might have to even stretch the spring a little bit. So you're both decreasing the the spring strength and also increasing the volume. 
a moderate amount by drilling it deeper. You can do that by clamping it into a vise on your on your uh, drill press and drill it about a quarter inch or you can do it on a mini mill or not mini mill, mini lathe which is what I'm going to do and let me just point out that uh, I've seen some modifications and I've done it too I've, I've actually performed these modifications where they they'll, they'll use a uh, a ball type grinding stone inside there to smooth it out more and uh, remove some of the threads and also even cut about half of these threads off well the problem is that uh, you're not gaining much volume by doing that and uh, and when you cut these threads off unless you bore these threads out you're creating more turbulence and uh, there's just too much too much possibility of damaging the valve seat and too little gain in doing so and I was getting uh, over 700 feet per second with just the unmodified valve in my 18 inch barreled uh, 2400 with the high pack unit running high pressure air so I really don't need to increase it much so uh, by just boring it a quarter inch deeper I think it'll work well again this bit is 2564 as you can see I'm going to bore it on my mini lathe if you don't have a mini lathe you can do it in a, a drill press and if you do that here's what I would recommend use some sort of uh, depth indicator on your drill bit I've used a rubber band and uh, that's a pretty good way to do it so what I would do is slip the rubber band over it you know double it up so it's tight and put it back the ways and uh, well actually I wouldn't put it back a ways I would uh, go ahead and push the drill bit into the the valve cap as far as it would go and go ahead and move it back a quarter inch to set your drilling depth then put the drill bit in the chuck and tighten it and hold the valve cap on the end of the bit so it's bottomed and uh, at that point go ahead and clamp it in the drill press vise so that you know it's straight and start it up and just carefully drill it down to the the stop that you set with your rubber band so you know you're getting the quarter inch depth now there are different ways to do it in a mini lathe but uh, what I'm going to do is just use a set of cap calipers go ahead and run it down to where it's bottomed and look at what we got here and just add a quarter inch so we got 1.05 so 1.4 is what we're looking for and I'll go ahead and lock that setting that looks about right so at this point I should be able to go ahead and start it
And it really is not a good idea to reach over a lathe like this. But I pretty much have to to be able to film it with the setup I've got. This is not super precise. If I needed super precision, I would use a magnetic mount with a, an indicator right here against the, against the back of the choke. But approximately a quarter inch will be fine. about right. So let's take it out and see how it looks. Okay, so it was about about 370 thousandths, I believe, if I remember right. And now it's about 655 thousandths. So that should be enough to give me a good performance bump. I wouldn't want to go any more than that and still expect to be able to use oh, CO2 cartridges on occasion as a backup or whatever. So there you have it. Now if you do this, like I said, you'll want to check your spring and it'll be lighter effectively because you know it'll be in a longer internal bore oh, so it'll be it'll be able to it'll be longer in its assembled position so you will want to uh, check it to make sure there's still some preload and if there's there's not you'll want to stretch it out a little bit but uh, that should work out well and uh, We'll test it soon and find out. I've got it back together with the old ring in place of course and the new seal and the spring does indeed still have preload. I didn't have to stretch it at all but it does feel a little bit lighter. So that should give me a nice bump in performance.